Before you can begin removing blown capacitors, you must remove excess adhesive that is on the front and the back of the power supply circuit board. Use your plastic knife and if necessary the razor blade to slowly cut the adhesive off. Be careful not to cut any metal portions or damage your circuit board when doing this. The goal of removing the adhesive is to expose the solder points of the capacitors connecting to the circuit board. You need to have these open and free so that you can use your soldering iron to melt the solder and remove these capacitors. Repeat the process on the front and back until all excess adhesive is removed and the solder points are fully exposed. Now plug in your soldering iron and allow it to heat up while you examine the circuit board and familiarize yourself with the capacitors to be removed. Examine the capacitors carefully and especially look at how they connect to the circuit board. Release the two larger capacitors from the circuit board using your plastic knife. Bend them upwards and release the adhesive from the back of them. Once you have released the capacitors from the adhesive, bend them upward, split them, and wiggle them slightly back and forth to loosen up them at the solder points. This will help when you use your soldering iron to melt the solder to pull them out. Alternate applying heat and pressure to the two solder points holding the capacitor into the board. Wiggle the capacitor gently on the other side to help loosen it. Once you have sufficiently loosened it, it should come free of the board. Repeat for each capacitor that you are going to replace. Now familiarize yourself with the capacitors to be replaced. All are 8 millimeters in diameter and all are rated for 105 degrees. The capacitors to be replaced include a 6.3 volt by 12 millimeters, a 16 volt by 12 millimeters, and a pair of 6.3 volts by 20 millimeters. Note that there is a negative and a positive side of the capacitor. The negative side is marked by a stripe down one side of it ending at the wire. In this stripe there will be open rectangular boxes. In each case the capacitor's negative side will be facing towards the right of the board or in the case of the one in the right hand corner straight up. The capacitors will be installed as shown here. Now dry fit the new capacitors into the holes left by the old capacitors. Bend the two wires on the longer capacitor at a near 90 degree angle, again with the negative side facing to the right. Fit the capacitors into the holes left by the old capacitors. If they do not fit, use your soldering iron to go back and clear out some more of the leftover solder. Keep this process for each capacitor that you will be replacing. Once everything is dry fit to your satisfaction, take the wires from the longer capacitors and give them a slight bend on the other side of the board so that they will hold in place largely by themselves. Then take your soldering iron and heat the wire right at the base where it meets the board. Heat the wire for about four or five seconds and then apply a little bit of solder to melt it into place. There may be enough residual solder from the old capacitors so that when you heat the wires it will simply melt into the holes holding it in place. If not, melt only a very small amount of solder. Too much solder could cause a bridge in the circuit and short things out, so only apply the very minimum needed. Repeat this process for every capacitor that you'll be replacing. Now that your new capacitors are soldered to the board, double check to make sure that your soldering job is sound. The wires should be firm and will not move the capacitors on the other side. Now take your nail clippers or wire snips and trim back the wires that are protruding through the board. 
The wires should be trimmed back until they are almost flush with the bottom of the board. Now for the final step, reassembly and testing. Put the board back in the plastic wrapping in the same way that it came out. Look carefully at the orientation and make sure that everything fits. This is important. If you don't put this back in the same way, it will not fit correctly back in your time capsule. There should be enough residual adhesive on the plastic casing so that you can put back any parts that you may have split off. If there is not enough adhesive, use a small piece of electrical tape to hold the pieces in place. Make sure that any gaps in the circuit board casing are covered with some sort of electrical tape or plastic. You want to avoid there being any sort of electrical short once you place it back into the time capsule. Also place electrical tape over any areas of the plastic casing that may be cracked or split. And finally, Put electrical tape over the seam to make sure that it stays closed once you reinstall. Heat resistant tape may also be used. Once the plastic casing is fully intact, rewrap it with a foil. Now you're going to reinstall the power supply into the time capsule the exact same way that it came out. However, at this time you are not going to reinstall the hard drive. If your repair was done incorrectly and you inadvertently caused a short into your power supply, we do not want to additionally short out your hard drive and lose your data. We'll reinstall the hard drive later after we have tested everything out. For now, reinstall the power supply in the exact same way in which it came out. There should be one cable coming from the main power supply plugging into the main time capsule circuit board. Also slide the white power cable socket back into the slots at the rear of the power supply. Now plug in the fan cable and put the bottom base of the unit back on. At this point, just screw in enough screws to hold the bottom of the unit in place while you test it out. Remember, you're going to have to reinstall the hard drive later. Now flip the unit over and plug in the power cable. If you've done your installation correctly, the amber light on the front of the unit should come on and eventually start blinking because it's not connected to a network. If not, you're going to have to go back and check your work and try again. Otherwise, congratulations. Now you can unscrew those screws from the back of the base and reinstall your hard drive and plug this back into your network.